is basically navigate your Kazil into the GitHub page, uh, followed by opening this file, which is the SPSS food water loss.csv. And then you can click this download icon. After you download, uh, you will be prompt uh, this kind of data, open up the data. After you open up the data, then you are going to see uh, extra column over here, which is indicate the Y1. But make sure that you are going to um, arrange your file according to the ascending number. Eh? Pastikan anda susun dulu dalam urutan menaik. Uh, that is the much more uh, important lah. Sort uh, smallest to largest. Okay, expand your selection. Sort. Okay, Allah masya Dia tak buat eh. Dia tak sort. Nah, kalau dia tak sort pun tak apalah. Yang penting, okay, dia dah sort. Sorry. So, after the sort, uh, and then you have one until 102, copy this one. Uh, make sure you copy number one, uh, this, this file, and then insert it inside your SPSS. Okay, faham ya? Eh? Masukkan kolom yang terakhir ni ke dalam anda punya SPSS. Okay, that is the first step lah. Kalau anda malas nak buat demikian, maka masukkan semua je lah. Masukkan semua pun will do also the same thing. Okay, masukkan semua tu macam mana? Oh, okay, ada ceritanya masukkan semua macam mana? Susun mengikut urutan. Lepas tu anda shift control on the right, on the down there. Copy and then paste it accordingly. So, after anda paste, then you have uh, the similar lah. Similar um, data like myself. Okay, done eh? Anda akan ada 102. Okay. Pastikan ada Y1. Y1. Y1 iaitu dinamakan sebagai volume of the water loss. Ha, ni saya dapat idea daripada kawan kamu ni. Bagi tahu water loss ni macam sesuai je. Okay. Layan-layan je. Malah nak kira yang susah. Ini asas senang je. Pakai data yang tadi. Ya? Pakai data yang tadi. Ha, tambah satu kolom je. Dia ada dua cara lah. Itu cara copy and paste. Cara yang paling susah sekali. Anda ikutlah. Saya baca satu, satu sembilan, dua type lah. Itu cara yang paling susah lah. Alright. Dah sudah kita akan belajar apa yang dipanggil sebagai simple linear regression. Are you ready? Dah ready ke belum? Okay. Untuk mengelakkan stres ini bertambah ber, berbondang-bondang, saya terus upload sahaja dalam GitHub SPSS file ini. Lagi saya tunggu nanti lagi banyak error eh. Tapi kalau saya upload, awak buka Nanti lagi hang Bukan lagi hang, lagi, lagi banyak file buka ni. Awak semua bukan jenis tahu nak tutup file pun Tahu buka je, tutup tak kerti Kan, saya buka file, buka file, buka file Tutup hilang terus Okay, you got the ID Y, X1, X2, X3 Dan ada yang masuk satu lagi adalah Y1 Betul eh? Okay, betul, baik so, mari kita mulakan analisa kita mengenai simple linear regression. But before I begin the simple linear regression journey, let me explain a little bit here and there about the uh, linear regression perspective. Okay, stand by. Okay, mula. Simple linear <coughs> regression. So, first of all, you need to understand that simple linear regression require a certain, certain assumption. What is the assumption relies on the simple linear regression? The assumption will be as follows, eh? First of all, data must be normal. Second, data must be numeric for IV and DV. And then, dia mesti mematuhi, uh, it must be comply with the heterogeneity. Heterogeneity. Heterogeneity means that the data must not have the uh, homogeneity effects. Eh? Homogeneity or variance must be um, good lah. Dia tak boleh ada uh, dipanggil sebagai apa eh? istilah ni. Allah masuk sana. Heterocadacity Heterocadacity ni Salah satu dia adalah heterocadacity Sorry Heterocadacity 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 ni Something to do with the Dia ada relationship dalam relationship lah Macam tu dalam bahasa Melayu lah Sekarang faham eh So benda ni terjadi is because you do not comply with the uh, Natural um, Natural Flow of doing statistical analysis Before you do the simple linear regression Usually we are going to explore it using Pearson first. Pearson correlation. Yeah? Pearson correlation. After we perform the Pearson correlation, then we run for the simple linear. Understand? So, let's say you run for the Pearson correlation. You find out that your X1 have a correlation with the Y. 
you find out that your x2 have the correlation between uh, x2 and y. So, you are going to look into the proposition of linkages between the y with the x1 and x2. Faham tak? Faham ke tak faham? Okay, saya ulang balik eh. When you run the Pearson correlation, usually you run it individually. Betul tak? Y1, eh sorry, y, X1 and also Y. Let's say the Y is water loss. Let's say the X1 is the uh, exposure score 1. Uh, exposure score 1 ni tak kisahlah. Kebersihan bangunan, saya kata. Eh? The hygiene. Okay, let me give you in the perspective of environmental health. Uh, hygienic score. Example lah, hygienic score. And then versus your uh, Y will be the... Um, DV lah uh, Number uh, Of okay. cases Something like that eh? Contoh So the uh, X2 Is another thing uh, Something like um, Hygienic score um, Pengamal With the cases Yes Macam mana soalan dia? Boleh 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 Ah betul Ah Betul juga Okay uh, Alright Saya tunjuk contoh yang baik Daripada kawan kamu tadi Contohnya Humidity Uh, versus cases contoh uh, temperature versus cases contoh uh, so ini dipanggil dalam bahasa saintifik uh, ecological correlation uh, ecological correlation ni uh, basic dia adalah simple linear regression why i say like this because humidity is one factor cases is one dv temperature is one factor one dv faham eh okay and then you want to combine it You want to combine it. Let's say the humidity, let's say the hygienic score or hygienic score of the pengamal is all the X. Betul tak? This one is X1. This one is another thing is X2. So all these Xs are going to be explored whether they have the linkages with the Y or not. That's why we use the simple linear regression. Faham tak? That's why usually we not use the simple linear regression only for X1 and Y. No, 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 no. no. X1 and Y. Uh, X and Y are oh, stuff, oh, X and Y are only being used for Pearson correlation. We usually use simple linear regression for modeling. Apa dah? Modeling. Modeling. Modeling of what? Modeling of multiple X and one Y. Understand? We got a lot of things with regard to the X, but we have only one Y, which is our uh, DV. X1, S2, X3 dan juga Y. Ha. Okay. Kalau awak buat pasal environmental um, exposure, then your environmental exposure is your X lah. Ha. Whether it is the temperature, humidity, uh, clouds ke, uh, hujan, taburan hujan, bilangan hujan, uh, model. pressure. Ini dipanggil sebagai simple linear regression. Yes. Kita ada lagi satu dipanggil multiple linear. MLR. MLR is differ because... The M here is actually talking about the multiple Y. Oh, multiple. Uh, multiple Y. You got the multiple X and multiple Y. Okay, understand? Uh, cases and flu, contoh. So, kalau you buat simple linear regression, usually you are actually looking for the modeling of X and Y. Multiple Xs can, but Y is only one. Jelas eh? Sama juga logistic regression. You got the multi-logic regression. Ataupun multiple <coughs> linear, uh, multiple logistic regression. Also multiple Y lah. So multiple, dia punya keyword dia adalah banyaknya Y. Okay, jelas eh? Got the multiple over there means the Y will be a lot. Uh, not one. Variable dan lebih. Yeah, your IV. Yes, your independent will be. Uh, increase. Alright. So, this is the assumption. This is simple linear. Ni kena betul-betul faham eh. Kalau anda tak faham, nanti sukar untuk anda amalkan. So, simple linear regression, please bear in mind. It is function for this one. Apa dia? <coughs> Modeling. Modeling eh. Alright. So, what is the purpose? Ah, so, now let learn about the purpose. What is the purpose of SLR? Simple linear regression. So, we have numbers of purpose. The first one is to S Estimate ataupun establish model. Model are going to be as follows. Eh? We have the model fit. Okay. And then the model also having what we call it as a fit model. 
Cube model lah. Cube model ni dengan kata lain adalah equation. Apa dia? Equation. Okay, ini dia punya purpose. Why we run for simple linear regression? is because we want to establish a model, we want to test the model, and we want to find the equation. Okay, so when we run, when we run the SLR, what we'll get? Ah, Apa yang kita akan dapat? The first one is called descriptive. Descriptive here means following R, R square, and we call it also... Uh, Uh, equation 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 regression equation regression equation so regression equation also is explained as y hat is equal to mx times or plus c okey sekarang ni jelas descriptive pertama when you run simple linear regression inside the spss or any statistical package you will get Three item. The first item yang yang you akan dapat is descriptive. What is descriptive I'm talking about? The first one is R. What is R? R is named as correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient, if you learn about the Pearson correlation product moment, you punya R adalah coefficient correlation. Same R that you run also inside the simple linear regression. Huruf besar ke? Okay. Huruf besar. R huruf kecil, soalan yang baik. R huruf kecil ni sebenarnya sama je dengan R huruf besar. Beza dia. Dengan baik-baik. Pearson correlation, as I mentioned to you, is only for 1x, 1y. But when you run the uh, simple linear regression, you ada multiple x. So that's why dia, dia ada huruf besar. Huruf besar ni sebenarnya bukan correlation coefficient, tetapi sebenarnya adalah multiple correlation coefficient. Okay, R kecil adalah apa dia? Correlation coefficient. Uh, saya kena ajar kamu. Sampai -sampai kamu betul-betul faham. R is correlation coefficient. Yes. R besar dengan R kecil sama. Jawapan dia sama. Tetapi, kalau R itu banyak, eh, tetapi kalau X itu banyak, maka R besar, uh, or we call it as a big capital of R, is actually a multiple correlation coefficient. Multiple correlation coefficient is actually looking, look like, eh, looking and look like the Pearson correlation lah. Uh, when you have a higher point which is near to the 0.8, 0.9, that's mean the correlation is good. That's mean the correlation between axis and y is good. That is the multiple correlation coefficient. Or we call it as the big capital R. But when you talk about the small r, it is a correlation coefficient meant for Pearson product moment correlation. Okay? This one I delete. Just do not want to make you confused. This is the first step. You must know what is the value of the R. Second one, R square. What is the R square? R square also known as correlation, uh, coefficient of determination. Coefficient of determination. Coefficient of determination is defined as how many, uh, how many percentage of the variance explained of the X for predicting the Y. How many percentage of variance explain for the x to predict the y? Example. Faham ke tak? Tak faham lah. Kalau dah, sekali, sekali cerita dalam bahasa ayat tu macam tak faham eh. Correlation of determination is the percentage of variance explain for the x to predict the y. I give you one example. 0.84 that you are going to see after this or any any numbers lah with regard to this you times it by 100 you will get approximately 84 betul tak 84 here is actually means bermakna 84% of the variance explain from your axis axis is explaining your y faham tak Example, example eh. I took one example. I got X, my X1 is actually temperature. My X2 is actually humidity. Let's say eh, this is the example. Okay. So, I got the R, multiple correlation coefficient is 0 0.989. Is that okay? Wow, quite big. Okay, and then I got the R square. 
the R square I got is around 0 0.873. I just want to ask, what is the percentage of this? 87. 87.3, right? Okay, why? Okay, let's say the Y is the number of cases lah. Let's say number of cases. Let's say, eh? Okay, so I got this one. 87.3. 87.3% of the number of cases is explained by the X1 and X2. Faham tak? But not relatively the X1, X2 lah. The variance of the X1, X2. Faham tak? So that's mean the X are able to predict what happened in terms of the Y by 87.3%. That means our X is quite useful lah. If you want to know something about the number of cases, let us monitor the temperature and humidity. Because the variance explain it is around 87.3. It's huge, it's huge. And it's also man, it's also meaningful for you to understand that the remaining, what is the remaining? Is around 13.7, right? 13.7. The 13.7% is actually what? Other factor that you are not studying. Understand or not? That is the function of the R square. Okay. Setakat ni jelas? I make another repetition. Eh? What is R? Multiple correlation coefficient. What is the R square? Coefficient of determination. Coefficient of determination is nothing more than a variance explain of the X to predict the Y. In this example, I give you one example of X, temperature, Y, humidity, and that, sorry, X, one temperature, X, two humidity, Y is the number of cases, let's say. So, your R is around 0 0.989, your R square is around 0 0.873, or it's equivalent to 87.3% or 87%. Lah. <coughs> That's mean... 87% of the variance explained. Ha, this one is actually a variance explained. The variance explained is actually, uh, the variance explained for the X1, X2 is much more higher in terms of explaining what happened to the Y. So, other factors is actually around 13.7. Uh, so, dengan kata lain, when you got the higher R and also the higher R square, your model fit are quite good. Significant. Yes. Quite good lah. Yeah. Significant or not, itu adalah number two. This one is number one only. Descriptive. This one is only descriptive. By looking into these two information, we know already what happened to our X to our Y. So, our example after this, we no need to talk about the X1, X2. We talk about only X1. Later on, we try to open up another data. That consists of X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. Then you much more clearer to see what is the much more significant. That's why in the simple linear regression, you have the enter method. You have the uh, hierarchical method. You got the backward method, forward method. So what does that mean by all this? The arrangement of the axes. X1 masuk dulu ke, X1 dengan X2 ke, X1, X2, X3 ke, X1, X2, X3 masuk ke belakang ke, X1, X2, X3 disusun secara terbelakang. So, 3, 2, 1, go first. Something like that. Why? Because of this. The variance explains. So, the higher the variance explain for the Y by the axis, uh, indicate that this model is quite good because we are just needed these two variable to get predicted very well number of cases. Haa. Uh. But this one is very unfortunate lah untuk jadi. Uh, tapi it can happen. And also you must remember eh, not easy something like you just do like this by chance. You cannot. Otherwise, you no need, uh, you don't get a statistical meaning. Contohnya, sometimes people like to use all this linear regression or this uh, Pearson product moment correlation without considering the theoretical behind. This is not true also. Contoh kan, anda bawa kereta Uh, BMW dan kelajuan dia anda kaitkan dengan jumlah air kencing yang keluar. Sedangkan tak ada kena-mengena pun. So, there is not a relationship. But you try to make it a relationship. Is that okay or not? The answer is okay. But it is not scientifically true. Uh, not suitable. So, that's why if I put here number of cases also, if someone knows about the statistics much more better than me or the statistical uh, professor also will comment in my video say that this is might not true. Which is correct. Because I cannot use the number of cases. In fact, I need to use the example number of cases per week. 
then I got the temperature and humidity also per week. Nampak? So, I will run the analysis by 5 years. So, I got 52 samples of data against uh, times by 5, which is approximately more than 100 of samples lah, which is got the proper X and Y. Correct or not? That relatively talking something to do with the uh, occurrence of this. Otherwise, this one is not correct lah. Okay? But this is hypothetical only. And then we see the another one, which is we call it as the regression equation. Regression equation. Regression equation is what you learned before in your uh, school. We call it as y hat is equal to mx plus c. Uh, this is a common. y hat is actually, um, macam mana saya nak buat lah? Dia y, uh, macam ni lah, saya type je kan lagu kita lah. Uh, linear regression. Yes, correct. Uh, this one. Uh, this is the, the the things that you are going to learn. Eh? Y1 is actually the functions of this one and that one. Eh? Uh, y hat ni dia macam ada tanda atas dia lah. Alright, whatever it is, yang I nak share with you now is not uh, talking about the MX sama C lah. The, the things that the usually the people inside the statistics school talk about is Y hat is equal to not M. M is actually the, M tu betul jugalah. Tapi M tu adalah gradient. Ah. But you are talking about the beta, beta naught, eh? uh, beta naught, ta plus beta x1, plus beta x n. Faham kan? So you will have a lot of x lah, which is the x1, x2, x3. So in our case now, kalau you pergi ke atas ni, kita akan ada beta x1, beta x2. Okay, so let's say lah, you got the equation, something like this, y hat is equal to uh, 0 0.345 uh, plus 0 0.456 uh, temperature okay plus uh, 0 0.091 humidity okay this is what we call it as the pe sorry not uh, re pe predictive equation ah ini istilah yang benar predictive equation okay so, is the simple linear regression is a part of the machine learning journey? The answer is yes. A part lah, a part. Kamu masuk a part? Sebahagian. Dia tak sepenuhnya lah. Why? Because it's only explained on a one perspective. Sebab ini data pelana, single dimension data. We are not looking into a dimensional data. Means that there are multiple dimension, they have a multiple... Uh, arrangement and rotational uh, Itu semua kita tak cerita lagi Kita rotational Data ni boleh berpusing lah oh, Itu semua level-level lain lah But this is the basic If you understand this one Khalas You are also able to fly With the uh, Logistic regression But remember It's only number one Where is number two? And eh, number three Ah, Dah ready? Number two Okay, R is usually is only being looked for to see whether it is higher enough or not. Only for that. Yes. The R square is actually looking for the two type of R square. The first one is the stationary R square. The second one is the adjusted R square. Yes. Uh, or we call it as a modified R square or whatever. Lah. So, the, the R square is much more needed especially in uh, theoretical science macam engineering all these people gunakan r square much more important rather than the r uh, why because the r square is something uh, important for them to know about the axis yang x tadi tu how big is the axis example eh, if i get the x1 and x2 i got 0 0.87 let's say i run another test i run another test which is the x1 and y only so i got what example eh i got 0 0.983. So, why I need do 2x? I need 1x only. Okay lah. Why? Because it is contributable effect to predict the y. Uh, that, that is the nature of why we need the both axes and none. But this one is quite unlikely lah. This one is quite unlikely. Biasanya tak berlaku macam ni lah. Biasanya when you add more axes, then you get more variable explained for the y. But some of it happen lah. Sebab satu lagi tu adalah dipanggil interference. Dia menjadi sisihan kepada lagi satu. So, when you predict it, it's become uh, interference to your data. That's why you remove it. That's why dia ada banyak 
step in term of regression. That's why when you produce a very complex regression equation only, you can get PhD already. Uh, only regression je? Yes, sebenarnya lah. But you must be very detailed lah. Uh, okay? How to make a PhD equation? Okay, how to make? Never mind. This one, I will talk to you later on after you get the output. But generally speaking, you are going to look into the T table ataupun we call it as the uh, independent table. Uh, independent. Uh, no, the, they call it as a independent. Yeah, yeah, independent test. Independent table lah. Or we call it as last table lah. Last table. Last table. Last table. Last table dalam SPSS. In SPSS. Uh, I must say like this. Otherwise, people not so sure what I'm talking about kan. So, a predictive equation or independent table or last table in SPSS can be used to construct this thing. If you want to construct it by yourself, also can. Which is we are going to do it later on. Are you ready? But before that, let us go into the number two. Ha, number two. Number two is called model fit. Model fit is actually the hypothesis testing. Apa dia? Hypothesis testing. So, the hypothesis of the model fit will be as follows. What is the null? Model is not fit. <laughs> Okay, as simple as that. Model is not fit. What does that mean by the model is not fit? The X and Y not fit. What does that mean is not fit? X and Y not related. Okay? Understand or not? Okay, so what is the hypothesis of alternative? Yes, model is fit. That's all. What does that mean? X and Y are related. Okay, this is all the jargon yang saya ubah daripada bahasa statistik yang orang tak faham to the extent that the lemon can understand. Eh? Hopefully, you appreciate lah. Eh? Okay, model fit of the hypothesis testing can be obtained where? You want to obtain it inside the ANOVA table. In where? SPSS. In SPSS. So, when you saw ANOVA table in SPSS, that's mean for model fit. That's mean you have the five step of hypothesis testing. Five step of hypothesis testing means what? Tentukan null, alpha, blah, 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 blah. So then you interpret based on that. Whether it is model is fit or model is not fit. Okay. And then you have the third one. That's why the second, that's why the SLR ni, the SLR, the things that the SLR down here after the descriptive is called inferential. Inferential. So in a nutshell, when you say SLR, you will have two things. Betul tak? One descriptive one and then one inferential. Uh, one inferential. That actually is two lah. Two inferential. So, both of this thing is is there inside your uh, simple linear regression. Uh, that's why kalau you nak buat uh, kajian ataupun you nak buat apa-apa data collection, I may encourage you to solely focus on numerical data because you can make a prediction. If you keep Collecting data in the categorical format, up to you. You still got the the, the, the output, but the uh, predictions are quite less accurate. Okay, so let us go to the third one or the final one. We call it as the predicted uh, equation. Uh, sorry, not predicted equation. Uh, significant predictor. Uh, this one is actually a significant predictor. Significant predictor of X. Of X, eh? So... We also need to run the another one which is a significant predictor of X. This one is the last table lah. Last table. So, menjawab pada soalan sahabat kita tadi. Last table here is actually being used for predicted equation and also to look into the significant predictor of X. So, what is the null? So, the null will be uh, separated by your axis. So, let's say the null is X1 is not significant predictor of Lepas tu, alternative, X1 is significant predictor of Y. And then, followed by the another one lah. So, because we have the multiple. Uh, multiple apa? We have the multiple. Uh, this one is for the uh, X1. Lepas tu, kita ada lagi apa? Uh, kita ada lagi lah. Null yang kedua pula, iaitu null X2. X2 kita apa tadi? Humidity. Faham tak? Uh, sebab kita ada banyak kan? So, the, the concept here is still the same. That we have to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis with regard to the assumption of the significant predictors. Because sometimes, 
we will see that the prediction or the significant predictors might have a relationship with only x1 but not x2 faham tak so ini contoh apa yang anda akan pelajari sebentar lagi okay so without further ado let us go into the data and see how we want to analyze those um, analysis and get the benefit out of it eh okay Uh, tak, kita sendiri kena tahu. We need to understand by ourselves. Means that they will give you the temperature, they will give you the humidity. They give you the the the, the value, they give you the table and you yourself need to interpret it. Whether you want to reject or fail to reject is because uh, is based on the p value and also the 95CI. Ah uh, yes. So that is based on you. So that's mean sometimes your uh, predicted equation can be reported. But you must also understand that Your predicted equation is correlated and independently uh, and interrelated to the model fit and interrelated with the significant predictor. Sometimes the model is fit, significant predictor is not all. Some only have the significant predictor towards y. They have the ability to predict the y lah, but some of it cannot. Okay, let us go into the example so that you can get a clear idea. So I have here the uh, the example of Y, Y dummy lah, Y1. Y1 is the example of the volume of the water loss. Let's say, eh, volume water loss is only an idea and an example about these issues um, together with the sum of expose. Sum of expose is the scoring of the exposure lah. Let's say lah, let's say. This is not the theoretically good example, but I will give uh, the idea to see the mechanic of how you want to run the analysis. Eh. First step, before you run any simple linear regression, I may encourage you to run the correlation first. Never ever. Just go straight, go to the regression. Never ever do like that lah. Go to the analyze, correlate by variate. Do this one first. Why? Variant. Yes. To confirm and to see whether there is an associate, as there is some relationship or not between these two variables. Eh? So run the sum exposed and also water volume loss inside the variable Uh, levels and then after that you can click the paste icon or uh, two tail uh, sorry uh, paste and then run uh, to see whether there is a correlation or not and then when i run i got the volume of the water loss is equivalent to 0.0730 betul tak so more than 0.7 is consider what this is based on the glifford rule of thumb 0.4 until 0.7 is consider high relationship correct or not uh, kan 0.7 sorry uh, 0.4 until 0.7 is moderate 0.7 until 0.9 is consider high betul tak so ini bermaksud positive high correlation that's mean the more higher you get exposed to the type of food the more water loss you will get lah uh, something like that lah hypothetically speaking this is the example of correlation Is there any correlation? The answer is yes. Positive or negative? Positive correlation. What is the nature of the relationship? It is a positive and high relationship. Not very high, but quite high. Because it's more than 0.7. Faham tak? Yang dia, you double click, you will see that the value of 000 is not 0. Actually, it is 0.00000018 times 3047. Or we call it as 3.047 times by the 10 power of minus 18. Maknanya dia 0.00000018 kali. Maknanya kita reject null lah. When we reject null, that's why we conclude there is a significant relationship between the sum of exposure and also volume of water loss. Alright, so yang ini you mesti tahu eh. Sebab ini you dah belajar dalam CCRM ni. Ini confirm you belajar dalam CCRM. You tak belajar, mustahil. You mesti belajar. Ha, cuma mungkin you lupa. Baik. You must remember... NOR, NOR, nature of relationship, which is talking about the strength and direction. The strength is high. Direction is positive. Why positive? Because no negative indications. That means it's a positive, high relationship. Khalas. Saya kena jelas, kan? Right. So, later on. Ha, now, when we know that this thing is correlated, therefore, therefore, you can run for linear regression. But remember, usually we not do this. Usually we not do this unless... <coughs> One of the objective is to develop a model. Usually, we not do this. Why? 
because we only run the simple linear regression unless we need a model. A model of what? A model of predicting the y based on multiple axes. Understand that? Eh? Jarang kita gunakan untuk satu x je. Kita guna untuk multiple axes. Why I say like this? That's why we have the three stages of analysis. Univariate, bivariate and multivariate. What is meant by the univariate? One variable only. What is the bivariate? Two variable, which is in this case, this example lah. Three uh, and uh, more than two is actually a multivariate, which is the simple linear regression is also one of it, which is we got a multiple axis. Contoh macam ni tadi kan, exposure of the sum, and then we got the another axis example lah. Age, apa dah? Age. Age pun kita tengok ada correlation juga. So, we are going to insert the age, we are going to insert the exposure score inside the model. That's why we want to know whether there are a significant correlation and relationship or not based on this multifactorial effect. That's the purpose of the linear regression. That's the purpose of using all these things. Other than that, it's not the purpose. Other than that, it's just to waste the RAM of your computer memory. Uh, you must really understand eh? why you do this, why you do that, why we need the simple linear regression. The answer is very, very, very simple. To predict what happened to the Y based on the multiple axes. Why? Because the X is your field. Uh, with regard to the environmental perspective. Lah. That's why the X... Uh, consider the environmental changes, environmental factors, environmental surveillance or any parameters that you measure in the field. Alright, after that, let us learn into the second part which is the simple linear regression as follows. Yeah? Oh, I'm, yes. uh, no, 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 this one is nothing to do with the simple linear. This one is only correlation. Oh, just, uh, R R R yes, they will get the same thing. They will get the same, same thing. Why? Because only X and only Y. One Y. They will get the same. Because the calculation is the same. But if you try to include another X, then the R, big, the big capital R will be different. Oh, same. Yes, the same calculation, but uh, differently when you uh, input more X's. Eh? Yes, this one is Pearson correlation just to know whether there is a correlation, whether, whether there is a relatedness or not. Ah, so, if we saw there is a correlation, there is a higher chances that this thing also are going to be significantly predicted. Ah, yes. If not related, then no need to proceed. If you still proceed also, that means you are not so clever. That's all. Make sure you proceed the simple linear regression with the idea that these all the things that are having correlation. Yes. Ah. Same also goes to, ah, ni, ni, ni advanced sikit. Same also goes to, kalau you ada data yang berkaitan dengan categorical data. You got a categorical data, but categorical data cannot run this thing. Why? Because we need a numerical data. So, how you want to do that? That's why in uh, advanced uh, analysis with regard to the simple linear regression, contoh kan, macam saya cakap tadi, uh, we need the IV and DV that are numeric. If we find out that we need to use the categorical also. Then, if need, okay, if need categorical data, then you have to develop what we call it as the dummy variable. Uh, means that male, eh, sorry, male or non-male. Um, so, you, you will have two variables, which is male or non-male, female or non-female, which is actually is the same. Lah. How to make the dummy variable? Using the record just now. That's why you learn record. Ha. Can you see here? We got the male and female as the as the variable, right? Which is the X6. Oh, X6 saya hilang lah. Mana-mana? Hmm. Oh, X6 saya dah ke sini. Ha. Okay, so this one is uh, male and female. So, we are going to create the another one. We call it as the X6.1, X6.2. What is X6.1? Male and non-male. What is X.2? Female and non-female. So, male and uh, male and non-male and female and non-female are going to become our dummy variable to be inserted inside our <coughs> simple linear regression. Later on lah. If we find out that the male and female are significantly associated or significantly related with our cases and also non-cases. Faham tak? Ha, itu dia punya flow. When you do not find out all this evidence, no need to insert everything inside the simple linear regression. Yes. Okay. Okay. Up to you. 
but of course that that is the purpose of only exploring lah uh, and practicing the skills yeah, but so for the practices mean... point of view for the uh, purpose of the interpretation point of view does not make any sense Explain, yes. Yes. I took one example. Like after this, if you run and you find out that the R square is less than, let's see lah, less than 70%. That means you have a lot of predictor that are unsure. That means you have something to do with the, um, this is one of the factor. What is the another factor? We also do not sure. So you not sure, your data also prove that not sure. So that means there are so many unsure conditions. So it is not good model lah. That's why I kata tadi, the main purpose is actually to model. Whether you want to have a good model or not model. Okay, remember, my statistical professor always say, all model are useless. All model are useless. But less error in model are useful. Faham tak? That means, memanglah sebab ia adalah prediction. It is only a prediction. It is only a game of numbers. That means all model are useless, of course. But with less error in your model, that means your model become useful. Ha, Sama lah macam hypothesis kan? Ha, itu sebab anda kalau belajar, jangan belajar bidang lain. Belajar statistik pun anda boleh jadi hebat. Ha, all model are useless, but less error in model are useful. That means all the model that we have seen here is Cannot use or uh, ataupun does not mean anything. But the most important is how to have a model that have less error. Because the model that have less error have a lot of insightful information that we can make a decision making process much more benefited to the humankind. Uh, example paling mudah lah. Macam kita buat fokus untuk kita punya weather. Semua tak betul. Pada hakikat dan dasar. Eh? In a nature of the world, of course, you are not God. You are going to say that today have no Ah, uh, apa nama thunderstorm in the evening? You are not God. No, we are just making a games of a prediction based on a climatic model. But the lesser the error that we can produce, the more accurate result that we can have, and the more predicted outcome we can do. Uh, that is the nature and the beauty of uh, the game of statistics, lah. Okay, <coughs> okay. Abis. So, <coughs> oh, mari kita teruskan lagi. So let us go into the simple linear regression. I'm going to share with you with two ideas. The first one using the SPSS, then and another one will be using the Excel. So let us open the Excel first lah. Uh, Excel ni nampak macam lebih mudah sikit. So go into the um, Excel yang you dah download tadi. Mana nak dapat? Masih yang you download tadi mula-mula tu. Yang namanya SPSS food water loss tu. Yang you ada dah kan? So we are going to predict whether there is a significant um, relationship or a significant predictors with regard to the sum exposed and also the y1 eh ni dua item ni kita akan buat i'm uh, using the um, excel here just to uh, just for fun lah to give you an idea how you want to run using the excel for any hypothesis testing okay first step go to the data and then you will have the data analysis view i do believe that i tell you already how to get this data analysis view kan okay go to the data analysis and then choose for the regression And then followed by the OK button. After that, please select your input range Y, which is this button, red button. Select accordingly your Y1 until the end of it, uh, until the end of your data lah. So that is the Y1. And then followed by the another one, which is our input of the X. Input of the X will be as follows, which is sum of exposed. Highlight everything. And then uh, also in insert accordingly. Followed by the another one which is the labels. Because I also select the labels kan. So go for the labels. And then followed by the confident levels. I'm going to set it as 95% confident interval. Uh, 95% confident interval. And then I'm going to use the new worksheet ply. So this new worksheet I'm just going to put here as PE lah. Predicted equation. And then you can request all of this. Eh? You can request the residual, standardized residual, residual plots line fit plots all these things you can request but i do not want to request lah at the moment just for uh, a descriptive nature of the explanation i just want to run it uh, straight away and then you are going to click the ok radio button over there when click the ok radio button the output are going to be generated as follows eh? they akan mengeluarkan output seperti berikut 
and we are going to make the interpretation after this and i really hope that you understand how to read it ah i hope that you understand how to read it okay that is how you want to run for a simple linear regression using excel okay so far so good come out already okay it is there all right so because i also talk about the excel let me introduce to you another software ya allah banyak sangat software nak kena belajar bukan belajar just for understanding you can also go for the excel add-in eh sorry excel add-in pula uh, kita call it as excel stat uh, xl stat uh, xl stat is another statistical software for excel this one you can download and then use it for free lah for quite sometimes i think kalau license untuk student is quite cheap lah dalam 50 ringgit or 50 uh, 50 ringgit i think for uh, this one for um for student for student apa nama ni student punya uh, ni excel stat ni bagus dia uh, because it's utilizing the additional excel function so dia add in jelah sebenarnya uh, just for fun lah to explain to you okay so now let us explore and interpret it together together as i mentioned to you we have three item the first item is what the second item is what the third item is what okay remember the first item is discrete descriptive the second is inferency inferential for what model model feed and then another one is inferential also but the second one is more on the significant predictors eh? this one is for significant predictors significant predictors okay so descriptive what is the r what is the r 0 0.730 okay is that the same with the pearson correlation the answer is the same Ah, is 0.730 right because it is x1 and y1 okay and then what about the r square ah, r square is 0 0.533 so if you ask me as a someone who are already been graduated from medical mechanical engineering faculty i don't like this value that's mean the variance explained is quite ambiguous means that is unsure why if we make the interpretation 0 0.533 means what 53.3 percent of the variance is explained uh, for the x to predict the y right so that's mean the sum of exposed here is only explaining about 50 50 percent about 50 percent so another 50 percent is what we also do not know only these three things know who is that god shaitan and malaikat so that's mean our research or our hypothesis and investigation is still incomplete or still unsure so we cannot mitigate the problem are uh, quite uh, useful lah in uh, using these predictors okay and then we have the another one is pe what is pe predicted equation okay predicted equation so the predicted equation will be will be as follows so the predicted equation will be based on the concept of y is equal to beta naught plus beta x1 so what is our beta x1 this is our beta x1 <coughs> This is our beta x1. So let me just do something like this. What is our beta naught? Beta naught is B0. What is our beta x1? Okay, the beta naught will be this value. What is the value? This one. The coefficient is your beta naught. Or we call it as the intercept. Paksi yang melintas pada paksi Y. Ini dipanggil beta naught. Ataupun garisan yang memintas pada paksi Y is also known as the intercept. Okay, and then we have the sum of exposed. The sum of exposed is actually a beta x1. Ataupun kita punya slope yang pertama, which is 2.209. So, this is our x1. This is our uh, c. Ataupun kita punya intercept. So, this is our c. This is our mx1. So, if you want to write the predictive equation, it will be something like this. Y hat <coughs> is equal to beta naught plus beta x1 correct so y hat is equal to what y hat is equal to 0 0.339 plus 2.209 uh, x1 is what x1 is sum exposed <coughs> okay understand sum exposed beta not beta not is actually being gathered from the intercept intercept okay so your coefficient here is actually a beta coefficient 
this is a beta coefficient zero, which is a beta naught, or also known as the intercept, or part C yang melanggar part C Y, and then 2.209 is actually our beta X1, ataupun the sum of exposed coefficient. Lah. So this is a uh, beta coefficient. It is not a standardized beta, eh? it is the unstandardized beta. Dalam bahasa statistik di SPSS, dia tak bagi coefficient tau. Dia tulis unstandardized. Unstandardized over there mean unstandardized beta for the intercept and unstandardized beta for the sum of exposed. Whatever it is lah, whatever it is, the first thing for the coefficient or unstandardized column is meant for your predicted equation. Okay, so your predicted equation is there and you are ready to make a prediction if you want to. Yes. So this is your predicted equation, right? And your predicted equation will be as follows, which is 0 0.339 plus 2.209 sum exposed. Or, kalau ada lah yang nak tukar terbalik pun boleh juga. Sebenarnya anda jadi confused sebab you dah biasakan dengan diri you Y sama dengan MX tambah C. Betul. Jadi, kalau nak tukar, pandai-pandai lah tukar. Susun je lah balik. Sebab tambah ni tak ada masalah pun susun depan belakang. Faham ya? Ha. Ini yang you dah biasa belajar, betul? Jadi, kalau nak buat macam yang you all dah belajar ni pun, jawapan dia bo boleh. Iaitu 2.209 sum expose. Okay, plus... 0.339 Cuma dia jadi pelik lah Because the way that you need to be taught Inside the epidemiology or any biostatistic class Is y hat is equal to beta naught plus beta x1 beta xn So kalau I ajar you letakkan benda tu kat depan Jadi macam baik tak payah belajar kalau biostat betul tak? Tak hmm. belajar sebab itu Okay kejap 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 Mana tadi? Allah Masyid Sena Umat Okay kat sini PE ya. Eh? Alright so tentu tuan-tuan sekalian So, you have another one which is the inferential which is model fit. This one is very simple. You look into the ANOVA. So, inside the ANOVA, you got the SS and also MS. So, the SS, I can't remember but it's a sum squared code. So, this one is the uh, mean sum squared. So, this one is the F statistics is for ANOVA and then this is a significant F. This is the p-value. So, if you find out that the value here is actually less than 0 0.05 which is our alpha, that's mean... We reject the null hypothesis. So, in this case, we reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. The answer is re reject. reject. So, when you reject the model is fit or not fit, the model is fit. That is the idea. Model is fit. As simple as that. That is the inferential for the model fit um, hypothesis. So, um, I forgot to mention also just now uh, about the adjusted R square. So, usually, when we are a scientist, we are not only look at the R square, we are also look into the adjusted R square. Faham eh? Adjusted R square here. When we use the adjusted R square, when we want to make a comparison with the another model. Faham eh? You ada X1 and X2. You ada X1 dan X2 yang digabungkan. You ada X1 yang di, tak digabungkan. You ada X1 and X2 yang tak digabungkan. Di, di, digabungkan depan dulu, lepas tu belakang kemudian. So, itu semua we are going to use the adjusted R square. Okay? So, that is the idea. Adjusted R square is for the comparison. Comparison. After this, nanti bila you run for the analysis using the SPSS, you are going to appreciate much more better because we got a lot of method. Uh, this is under the methods. So, under the methods, we will have uh, numbers of methods lah. Named as the backward, forward, met, uh, enter method, uh, hierarchical method, and so on and so forth. So, last but not least, the inferential or the significant predictors. So, this one, you are going to look into your variable. So, this is our variable. This is not our variable. This is our intercept item. Ataupun, uh, this is not a variable lah. This is being positioned or being calculated based on the uh, calculation. This is our variable. So, our variable here have this coefficient, have this a standard error, have this t statistics, have this p-value. So, the p-value is less than or more than alpha? Less. Less than. So, less than alpha means that reject or fail to reject or not? Reject. So, is there any significant predictors with regard to the sum and yes. also the y? The answer is yes. Yes. There is a significant predictor. Eh? There is a significant predictor. There is a significant uh, predictor. Yes, significant. Uh, oh, tak, okay. kita akan tengok dekat table yang bawah ni. That's why I said last table. Uh, last table also here, he call it as a t-statistics lah. The t-statistics table will tell about the significant predictors. No, tak tengok dekat intercept. Intercept? No, oh, no, because the intercept is not our variable. The intercept is only talking about What is the value when they pass through the line? The line of our equation. I mean, 
the line of our data lah yang ada pada kita punya x y data ni sama ah ya ya yes betul the the algorithm or the value that you see here might be similar because this one is x uh, x1 and y1 dia tak akan dapat beza but when you deal with a lot of access you will appreciate it much more better lah i mean dia boleh nampak lebih jelas lah apa dia punya function ya. Cuma I nak bagi tahu kat sini, you punya lower and upper 95% CI ni, it seems like what you learn before. It is considered not significant. You see eh, this one is not significant right? Because it's more than 0.05. It's when you have the data that is cross the zero. This one is cross the zero right? It is not significant. When it is not crossing any zero, that's mean it's significant. Okay, so you have to approach to make a judgment whether you have a p-value or you have the 95 CI for the lower and upper. Usually, when you have the statistical table book to calculate manually, you will not able to see the P. But you can only see it by LR, CI down and CI upper. Uh, usually lah, usually. Kalau you buat OR, CI, ke, eh, kalau you buat OR pun, dengan RR, you tak akan terus boleh nampak P. Betul? You only can see it much more easier when you run for the CI. CI lower and CI upper. That's why CI lower dengan upper ni, please, make a uh, revision of my explanation before with regard to the way to calculate it you can uh, find it out in any uh, apa nama ni we dia boleh macam-macam cara lah nak dapat tahu cara dia for the SPSS so let us do the same thing analyze uh, regression and then linear so this is how you want to run it based on the uh, simple linear regression using SPSS analyze, <coughs> analyze <coughs> regression linear Okay, I'm going to run it with the assumption that the data is meeting the assumptions of simple linear regression. Understand eh? Sepatutnya kena run dulu untuk normality. Kena tengok dulu uh, heterocadacity tadi. Yeah. Tapi saya run with the assumption that this is okay. Yeah. Alright. So, the dependent, yeah. The dependent or the Y1 <coughs> will be our factor. And then we insert another one which is the sum of exposed inside the independent. Okay, just doing these two things. And then we can straight away uh, produce this um, analysis. But before you click any button, let me teach you what is the meaningful of all this table. Yeah? The first one is statistics. You can click that one. The statistics here are going to help you to go for the regression coefficient. And then you can click the another one, which is the confident interval CI. This one, these two things is quite important, lah, especially for those who are, uh, who are all of you, lah, which is at that, memang kena tahu CI. And then we also want to request for this one, which is the descriptive. What is the descriptive um, things that we are going to see? We are going to see something to do with the R, R square, adjusted R. All these things are considered very useful and interesting to be explored first before we run for uh, any uh, inferential statistic. And then you can also tick for the below one, which is the collinearity diagnostic. Collinearity diagnostic ni is to checking for the um heterocadacity and so on that i mentioned to you before lah and then you can click for the continue okay this is the three most important things which is the ci descriptive and also polarity all right so the r square change can be choose if you have multiple model for comparison yeah whatever it is for the r square is for comparison is quite useful but for uh, individual or single one might be not very useful lah. Okay, and then followed by the continue, and then you can click the plots. Okay, this is quite advanced. I will not touch this one, but I give you some idea. The plots over there is quite advanced in a way that you want to plot the residual of the analysis. So, there are some theory behind it and so on, with the histogram proposition and so on. I'm not going to touch it, but to use this, you must use the Z-Pred and also uh, Z-Rest, which is the residual and the predicted which is we are going to perform some sort of is there any relationship or not based on the predicted and residual predicted maknanya bayangan kita residual adalah lebihan daripada perbezaan itu tadi yang ini anda abaikan dulu lah sementara ni letak anda lagi kicap ok save save ni the save icon able yourself to save your model because you can rerun back your model but in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it in a robust setup. Okay, and then followed by the option. Uh, option is if you want to do some sort of a stepping mechanism from the criteria. And then followed by a style. No need, bootstrapping is different things. Okay, this is 
quite useful. All right, next is the block. You can see that we have a numbers of options. You can click next. You can click previous. So the next and previous enable you to put as a layer, which is the step number one. And then step number two, include the sum of exposed and nasi lemak. And then number three, sum of exposed with the nasi lemak, and nasi ayam, and mi goreng. Put the, you can put it as a layer. You can put it as a group. You can put it as a team or not team. So all of that is possible using the SPSS. And then you have a method over there. You see that is a method. Stepwise mean that you can move it forward, remove. That mean if there is not significant, it will remove from the model. Backward is run it at the back which is it will start with something that uh, lower until higher, higher until lower. So that is called uh, backward, forward, stepwise, remove, and um, enter. So we are going to run for the robust, which is enter method. Okay. And then you can click paste. After a mouthful of explanation with regard to the uh, SPSS for the simple linear regression, you can highlight it, and then you can run, and then see what is the outcome are going to be given from the uh, SPSS menu. You are going to uh, you are going to see something like this. So the first one you got the uh, descriptive statistics. You got the correlation, right? If you did not, if you did not request for descriptive, this one is not going to be produced for you. Understand? Eh? If you did not check the button, eh? let me uh, give you an example. Eh? You no need to do this. I just want to give you an idea only. Okay, let's say eh, I did not request. I did not request. I did not request this one. I just request the colonality diagnostic and this. So what I will get is nothing more than only my model. My model analysis lah. Which is I don't have the descriptive. Okay. But just now let us run uh, the real deal that uh, all of you and myself also run. Which is we run this one. That we have the um, actually it is uh, on uh, uh, this one. Uh, what we insert additionally is this one, right? Mean standard. Ah, we, we put another one which is the descriptive. This one uh, down here do not have the descriptive. That is in the syntax punya uh, output lah. That syntax punya request. Okay, when you run, you will get something like this: descriptive correlation. Okay, variable entered or removed. It is already being um, set up as the enter method. So you got the R, you got the R square, you got the adjusted R square, you got the standard error. And then we got the ANOVA table. ANOVA is for what? Model? Model feed. Very good. And then we got the coefficient. So the coefficient, as I mentioned to you before, this is what we call it as a coefficient inside the Microsoft Excel. But this is one is called also unstandardized beta. So the unstandardized beta is actually 2.209x plus 0.039. That is our intercept. So that is our predicted equation. Same like before. Okay. And then we have additional collinearity statistics. So this one is the collinearity tolerance of the uh, statistic, whether there is some collinearity effects or not, uh, based on this, uh, which is the collinearity tolerance, and also statistic based on the VIF. Uh, VIF ni adalah function untuk kita check uh, what, whether the diagnostic of the collinearity berlaku atau tidak. Just to take the assumption. As I mentioned to you, we disregard all this assumption to make your life much more easier in terms of understanding the process of how we want to run the simple linear regression. Okay.